Are you trying to get started with the Avidyne IFD GPS Navigator? Let me show you the most important features to get you on your way. In this first part, we'll look at what happens at power up as well as how to tune the COM and NAV radios on the IFD in under 5 minutes. I would like to thank Avionics Source for sponsoring this video. Upgrade to the Avidyne IFD through Avionics Source and receive $150 off. Let's get started! After you turn on the Avionics, you'll see the self-test screen, while your CDI or HSI deviations show one dot left and one dot high, and the MFD, if one is installed, shows a test leg to a fictitious Avidyne waypoint. Confirm these indications with the Enter key. Then the IFD will check the status of the installed databases and show any which are out of date in yellow color. You only see an indication if any of the databases are out of date, so if you don't see any message here, that means all is good. There are three large buttons on the bottom of the unit, four if you have an IFD 550. Pushing one of them directs the screen to one of the main pages, like FMS for flight planning or map. Pushing just the far left or right side of these rocker switches moves to a tab within the page, such as flight plan, info or route. This is how you navigate through the different screens of the IFD's user interface. You can also touch the little tab on the screen with your finger to go to a different one. One of the first things you may want to try is tune a radio. The frequencies are shown on the left side. The active one is shown in green. That's the one you're listening to and talking on. The other one is the standby frequency. Below each frequency, the IFD also shows in smaller letters which ATC function it belongs to, if that's known from the database. Like Cedar Rapids Tower or Ground. You toggle the active and standby frequencies by pressing the button with the two-headed arrow. When changing frequencies, you always enter a new one into the standby field first, then toggle it into the active field at the appropriate time. There are several ways to enter a standby frequency. You can use the two concentric knobs in the bottom left corner. This works like on pretty much any aircraft radio out there today. The IFD also tries to anticipate which frequencies might be useful based on your position, for the origin or destination airport, or for air traffic control services along the way and it keeps a history of recently used frequencies. On the larger IFDs, use the frequency button on the right to get into this screen. The smaller ones don't have a frequency button. They display the screen automatically anytime you twist the left side rotary knobs. You can tap any of those using the touchscreen or select one using the right side rotary knobs and then pressing enter, which will put it into the standby field of the radio. The larger knob lets you move between the airport and route and recent frequency lists while the smaller knob lets you move up and down those lists. A third way is to tap on the frequency with your finger. This will bring up an on-screen keyboard, on which you can enter a new frequency. Since the first digit is always a 1, you can omit it, but the IFD will also accept your input if you begin your entry with the first one. Likewise, you can enter a decimal point, but in most cases it's not needed. The IFD will figure it out just based on the digits you enter. Your volume control is the small rotary knob in the top left corner. You can also push this button briefly to toggle the squelch on and off. Pushing it longer allows you to shut down the IFD. To select a VOR or ILS frequency, push the bottom left rotary knob, then you can change the navigation frequency the same way you can change voice frequencies. Pushing the small knob in the top left corner allows you to listen to the Morse code identifier or just voice transmissions, such as from a flight service station. If a NAV-8 transmits a Morse code identifier, that identifier may also be displayed in smaller letters below the frequency. Keep in mind that it may take a few seconds for the radio to hear and decipher the Morse code. Depending on how your user-defined data blocks are set up, you may see more than one standby frequency for your communications radio. In that case, tap the one you want to modify before touching the rotary knob or entering the digits. Likewise, tap the desired standby frequency before hitting the toggle button. If most of your flying revolves around the same three or four frequencies, you can keep them available this way at all times. And that is how you tune radios on the Avidyne IFD. Next time, we'll look at the basic flight plan features on the IFD. Again, in under five minutes. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to my sponsors and to my patrons who help make these videos possible.